Right, guys, how's it all going? How is everyone doing today? What bullshit are we going to get from Boris Johnson is the real question, obviously. I'm a bit unprepared. I had to sort something else out. Hopefully it's working fine. If not, nothing I can do about it. We're balls deep at the moment. Let me get my headphones so I can hear what's going on when it goes on. So we got about 10 minutes, maybe less, to speak before he actually starts speaking, which I won't talk over. So what do you guys think? What do you think he's going to say today? Do you think the leaks are true? Do you think they are what it's going to be? Or do you think it's going to be more cautious, even though it seems pretty cautious to me? Welcome, everyone who's joining. Uh, that's currently what's happening in Parliament at the moment. We can get rid of him. We'll wait until they actually do something. <laughs> Carol saying whatever Tony Blair tells him. Well, that seems to be the case, don't it? It's apparently what's going on. We're run by Tony Blair. Andy, Andy, welcome. Welcome everyone else. Where have I been? I've been pretty busy. And often there's nothing really that warrants me sitting here in a stream talking about it. I mean, I could do it and talk about a few things, but maybe I should. It would actually save me a lot of time. It's a hell of a lot easier to sit there and do a live stream than it is to, say, make a video or something like that. But personally, I don't think this is going to be any different to what we're under now. I see most people practically ignoring everything the government has told them to anyway. So I can't see if the changes are true, which you can see on the right side. That's not really much different to what's happening now, with the exception of uh, schools going back. That's it. Uh, Henry, I will try to stream more often. It's all a matter of time. Hopefully, once the kids go back to school and that, I should have some more time on me, and so I might be able to do some, but... It's all about time, mate. Time is the enemy. And, of course, politicians. Yeah, schools now, businesses by Easter. They should just open up. If their cases and all this is dropping like they say it is, open the doors, let's go. What are we waiting for? Get the pubs open, get the shops open, get the businesses open. Take the money off of every single politician who supported lockdowns to pay for all the businesses that they've destroyed. That's what I'd go for. Everyone who's lost out on their business or had to pay money when making no money because of government ministers and MPs supporting this lunacy. They should be made to pay it back to them. Then maybe they wouldn't be so quick to lock us all down. It's just a thought. Uh, Rob, now the illegals will have health passports. That's why Boris offered them an amnesty. So 100%. They'll get the health passport too. They'll put it on their free phone that they gave them when they arrived. Chances are they've probably got a better phone than you at this point. Uh, Brian, enough is never enough with politicians. And the problem is, once you give them powers, they don't like giving them back. So, uh, you can take from that what you will. Uh, no, you've missed absolutely nothing. Me talking crap for about five minutes. And that's about it. I don't know what I've done with my milkshake. There we go. Oh, shit, I haven't even asked if the audio's all right or that. I didn't even check. Afternoon, everyone who's just joining now and has joined since I said afternoon the first time. Sound is fine. There we go. Got bonus. It doesn't even look like Boris has bothered to appear yet. 
Uh, no, Victoria, I've had this mic for probably eight months now. I still don't understand how to use it properly. Don't know much about audio, though. The computer power in it I can deal with, but the audio, not a clue. Uh, Scott, it's a banana milkshake, mate. Yeah, someone said he's waiting on his script. Can we also get a Ramon? Is it still on here? I can add it. Give me one moment. I will add it as I'm sitting here trying to chat to you. Let's see how well the... Uh... Double tasking goes. I was actually supposed to be fresh installing my gaming PC today, but I kind of buggered it off and decided to do this. Where's Ramon when you need it? There we go. Ramon! Ramon! <laughs> there we go. Uh, what's with the migrants? How many today through Dover? Well, apparently there's been like six boats or something. A BBC reporter decided it was four, but video recording suggests six, so you can wonder who's telling the truth there, or does it even require wondering? It's the BBC. Not even skiing safe anymore, remember. Uh, Henry, I do sometimes stream on Twitch, but not very often. Once again, it's down to time. Supposed to be 50. I heard 60. But it's more, probably more like 90 or 100. They're just the ones they found. Yeah, I think Paris has fallen, Carol. Well, uh, it's, it seems like a bit of a shit state. And actually, I see reported today that their um, deficit is above anywhere else in the EU. I'm sure it was anywhere else in the EU. They got the biggest deficit in the Eurozone. Yeah, that's what it said. And there you go. You got a Ramon there with the donation. Thank you very much, Joe King. Uh, Matt Meadow would say England has fallen. I'd say the whole country has fallen under Boris Johnson at this point. We used to be the heart of democracy, weren't it? The mother of democracy was the UK. Land of the free. Not any fucking more. Uh, Henry, no, you won't because it's Parliament's actual channel. If I was to do it from like the sun or something, maybe. Though, to be honest, I think they use Parliaments as well. Parliament actually allow you to do it. And it would be covered under... Uh, Fair use anyway, considering you can hear me talking shit through 90% of it. Uh, Ollie, yes, I have. It's good fun, mate. Uh, Phil Birch, I will be covering the coke situation sometime soon. Probably uh, next couple of days, because I don't want the story to die out. We want to keep, uh, keep their feet to the fire on that one. Let's not get it lost in the news cycle too quickly. I actually see that two supermarkets in Wales today, furthermore, have been done for selling non-essential goods. I don't know who defines what's essential and what's not, but there we go. Wales is definitely lost. <laughs> Stroppy Cow says diet woke. <laughs> That's a fucking good one. The can out, he should never have been in. But yeah, definitely out now. I wonder how many kids have died on his watch. Scotland is done. Hopefully, uh, we Jimmy Cranky's done. We should find out about that on Wednesday, hopefully. And it should be finished by next week when Sturgeon pops up. Uh, Sad Wings Raging, thank you for the donation. He says, I wonder if the French would spot dinghies if they were going the other way. You bet your bollocks to a barn dance they fucking would. 
they'd spot them straight off and send them straight back this way. You can guarantee it. Any other country in the world would. Oh, we got a little break here, so we might have Boris Johnson arriving anytime soon. Or, as is common with this, he might well be late. How long has he been late for? So, how many things has he been late for so far? Sorry. Press conference is two hours after they're supposed to start. Ramon! Ramon! Communist lockdown censorship, great name. Keep exposing this nonsense, dude. I don't need to expose it. They expose themselves. You just need to show it to people. Jail Matt Hancock. Yeah, well, you see, when he acts unlawfully, nothing happens. If we was to act unlawfully, the Stasi would be round in five minutes. Guaranteed. Shit, you give someone a bit of abuse on Twitter and they'll be round in five minutes. Yeah, and anyway, let's be honest, if the uh, politicians fully exposed themselves for their pure stupidity and bullshit, the BBC would cover it up anyway. You can hardly trust them to report the truth. They'd likely blame it on racism at this point. Uh, Hudicus and Joanne Fisher, thank you very much for the donations. I'm not sure what that second one is. Oh, that's that silly sticker thing, isn't it? Fucking hell. Now we're going to get donations coming in. I ain't going to be able to read them all out. Uh, Sean Southall, thoughts on David Curtin running for London Mayor? Anyone but Khan at this point. I'll take absolutely anyone but Khan. Ramon! Ramon! At the end of the day, I don't think anyone could fuck it up quite as much as he's done. And Moonson Silver, Silver Light, who says, just to say, I appreciate the work you do. I also upgraded my membership Ramon! to Ramona Nemesis about two Ramon! weeks ago. It's worth it. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, Celtic Crusader, I'm not in a suit. Oh, here comes Boris. Ramon! Right, let's get this back on. Ramon! Boris is here. Old Boris. Ramon! Ramon! Order, before I call the Prime Minister to address the Chamber, I'd like to point out that a British Sign Language interpretation of the statement is available to watch on the Parliament Live TV. I now call the Prime Minister to make his statement. Prime Minister! I'll go quiet. Mr Speaker, with your permission, I will make a statement on the roadmap that will guide us cautiously but irreversibly towards reclaiming our freedoms while doing all we can to protect our people against COVID. Today's measures will apply in England, but we're working closely with the devolved administrations who are setting out similar plans. The threat remains substantial, with the numbers in hospital only now beginning to fall below the peak of the first wave in April. But we're able to take these steps because of the resolve of the British public and the extraordinary success of our NHS in vaccinating more than 17.5 million people across the UK. The data so far suggests both vaccines are effective against the dominant strains of COVID. Public Health England has found that one dose of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine reduces hospitalizations and deaths by at least 75%, and early data suggests that the Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine provides a good level of protection, though since we only started deploying this vaccine last month, at this stage, the size of its effect is less certain. But no vaccine can ever be 100% effective. Not everyone will take them up, and like all viruses, COVID-19 will mutate. So as the modelling released by SAGE today shows, we cannot escape the fact that lifting lockdown will result in more cases, more hospitalisations and sadly more deaths. And this would happen whenever lockdown is lifted, whether now or in six or nine months because there will always be some vulnerable people who are not protected by the vaccines. There is therefore no credible route to a zero-Covid Britain or indeed a zero-Covid world. 
and we cannot persist indefinitely with restrictions that debilitate our economy, our physical and mental well-being and the life chances of our children. And that is why it is so crucial that this roadmap should be cautious but also irreversible. We're setting out on what I hope and believe is a one-way road to freedom and this journey is made possible by the pace of the vaccination programme. In England, everyone in the top four priority groups was successfully offered a vaccine by the middle of February. We now aim to offer a first dose to all those in groups five to nine by the 15th of April, and I'm setting another stretching target to offer a first dose to every adult by the end of July. As more of us are inoculated, so the protection afforded by the vaccines will gradually replace the restrictions. And today's roadmap sets out the principles of that transition. The level of infection is broadly similar across England, so we will ease restrictions in all areas at the same time. The sequence will be driven by the evidence, so outdoor activity will be prioritised as the best way to restore freedoms while minimising the risk. At every stage, our decisions will be led by data, not dates, and subjected to four tests. First, that the vaccine deployment programme continues successfully. Second, that evidence shows vaccines are sufficiently effective in reducing hospitalisations and deaths. Third, that infection rates do not risk a surge in hospitalisations which would put unsustainable pressure on the NHS. And fourth, that our assessment of the risks is not fundamentally changed by new variants of COVID that cause concern. Before taking each step, we will review the data against these tests. And because it takes at least four weeks for the data to reflect the impact of relaxations in restrictions, and we want to give the country a week's notice before each change, there will be at least five weeks between each step. The Chief Medical Officer is clear that moving any faster would mean acting before we know the impact of each step, which would increase the risk of us having to reverse course and reimpose restrictions. I won't take that risk. Step one will happen from the 8th of March, by which time those in the top four priority groups will be benefiting from the increased protection they receive from their first dose of the vaccine. Mr Speaker, all the evidence shows that classrooms are the best places for our young people to be, and that's why I've always said that schools would be the last to close and the first to reopen. And based on our assessment of the current data against the four tests, I can tell the House that two weeks from today, pupils and students in all schools and further education settings can safely return to face-to-face -face teaching, supported by twice-weekly testing of secondary school and college pupils. Yeah. Families and childcare bubbles will also be encouraged to get tested regularly. Breakfast and after-school clubs can also reopen and other children's activities, including sport, can restart where necessary to help parents to work. Students on university courses requiring practical teaching, specialist facilities or on-site assessments will also return. But all others will need to continue learning online and we will review the options for when they can return by the end of the Easter holidays. From the 8th of March, people will also be able to meet one person from outside their household for outdoor recreation, such as a coffee on a bench or a picnic in a park, in addition to exercise. But we're advising the clinically extremely vulnerable to shield at least until the end of March. Every care home resident will be able to nominate a named visitor, able to see them regularly, provided they are tested and wear PPE. And finally, we will amend regulations to enable a broader range of COVID-secure campaign activities for local elections 
on the 6th of May. As part of step one, we will go further and make limited changes on 29th of March when schools go on Easter holidays. It will become possible to meet in limited numbers outdoors where the risk is lower. So the rule of six will return outdoors, including in private gardens, and outdoor meetings of two households will also be permitted on the same basis so that families in different circumstances can meet. Outdoor sports facilities such as tennis and basketball courts and open air swimming pools will be able to reopen and formally organised outdoor sports will resume subject to guidance. From this point, 29th of March, people will no longer be legally required to stay at home, but many lockdown restrictions will remain. People should continue to work from home where they can and minimise all travel wherever possible. Step two will begin at least five weeks after the beginning of step one and no earlier than the 12th of April with an announcement at least seven days in advance. If analysis of the latest data against the four tests requires a delay, then this and subsequent steps will also be delayed to maintain the five-week gap. In step two, non-essential retail will reopen, as will personal care, including hairdressers, I'm glad to say, and nail salons. Indoor leisure facilities such as gyms uh, will reopen, as will holiday lets, but only for use by individuals Hunt. or households. I'm so sorry, groups. Jeremy Hunt. I've we never said that before in my life. It's usually men who say that. In restaurants, outdoors, and honourable members will be relieved there will be no curfew and the scotch egg debate will be over because there will be no requirement for alcohol to be accompanied by a substantial meal. Yeah. Zoos, theme parks and drive-in cinemas will reopen, as will public libraries and community centres. Step three will begin no earlier than the 17th of May. Provided the data satisfies the four tests, most restrictions on meetings outdoors will be lifted, subject to a limit of 30, and this is the point when you will be able to see your friends and family indoors, subject to the Rule 6 or the meeting of two households. We will also reopen pubs and restaurants indoors, along with cinemas and children's play areas, hotels, hostels and B&Bs, theatres and concert halls will reopen their doors and the turnstiles of our sports stadia will once again rotate, subject in all cases to capacity limits depending on the size of the venue. And we will pilot larger events using enhanced testing with the ambition of further easing of restrictions in the next step. Step four will begin no earlier than the 21st of June. With appropriate mitigations, we will aim to remove all legal limits on social contact and on weddings and other life events, we will reopen everything up to and including nightclubs and enable large events such as theatre performances above the limits of step three, potentially using testing to reduce the risk of infection. Mr Speaker, our journey back towards normality will be subject to resolving a number of key questions and to do this we will conduct four reviews. One will assess how long we need to maintain social distancing and face masks. This will also inform guidance on working from home, which should continue wherever possible until this review is complete. And it will be critical in determining how Parliament can safely return in a way that I know honourable members would wish. A second review will consider the resumption of international travel, which is vital for many businesses which have been hardest hit, including retail, hospitality, tourism and aviation. A successor to the Global Travel Task Force will report by the 12th of April so that people can plan for the summer. The third review will consider the potential role of COVID status certification in, help, in helping venues to open safely, but mindful of the many concerns 
surrounding exclusion, discrimination and privacy. And the fourth review will look at the safe return of major events. Mr Speaker, as we proceed through these steps, we will benefit from the combined protection of our vaccines and the continued expansion of rapid testing. We will extend the provision of free test kits for workplaces until the end of June, and families, small businesses and the self-employed can collect those tests from local testing sites. Mr Speaker, in view of these cautious but, I hope, irreversible changes, people may be concerned about what these changes mean for the various support packages for livelihoods for people and for the economy. So I want to reassure the House we will not pull the rug out. For the duration of the pandemic, the Government will continue to do whatever it takes to protect jobs and livelihoods across the UK. And my right honourable friend, the Chancellor, will set out further details in the Budget next Wednesday. Finally, Mr Speaker, we must remain alert to the constant mutations of the virus. Next month, we will publish an updated plan for responding to local outbreaks with a range of measures to address variants of concern, including surge PCR testing and enhanced contact tracing. We can't, I'm afraid, rule out reimposing restrictions at local or regional level if evidence suggests they are necessary to contain or suppress a new variant which escapes the vaccines. Mr Speaker, I know there will be many people who will be worried that we are being too ambitious and that it is arrogant to impose any kind of plan upon a virus. And I agree that we must always be humble in the face of nature and we must be cautious. But I really also believe that the vaccination programme has dramatically changed the odds in our favour and it is on that basis that we can now proceed. And of course, Mr Speaker, there will be others who will believe that we could go faster on the basis of that vaccination programme. And I understand their feelings and I sympathise very much with the exhaustion and the stress that people are experiencing and that businesses are experiencing after so long in lockdown. But to them, and to them all, I say that today the, really is, the end really is in sight, Mr Speaker. And a wretched year will give way to a spring and a summer that will be very different and incomparably better than the picture we see around us today. And in that spirit, Mr Speaker, I commend this statement to the House. I now call the Leader of the Opposition, Right Hon. Keir Starmer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I thank the Prime Minister for advance sight of his statement and for the telephone call between us earlier today? Mr Speaker, this is the third time the Prime Minister has announced a plan to come out of national lockdown. In the past, we have emerged without sufficient caution, without a clear plan and without listening to the science. We can't afford to make those mistakes again. This has to be the last lockdown. Now, the vaccine rollout, as the Prime Minister said, has been remarkable, and I want to pay tribute to everybody involved. It is the light at the end of the tunnel, but if we're going to get there, we have to tread very carefully. So I'm glad the Prime Minister spoke today of caution, of this being irreversible, of assessing the data and following the evidence. Those are the right guiding principles. Right. Do we even want to listen to what this tit's going to say? Because he's literally just going to support Boris after moaning, pissing and whining about it like he did last time. It's up to you guys. I will let you listen to it if you want to. But to be honest, I don't. Because I know he's just going to support Boris. They'll vote for it. Job done. See you later. No, I didn't think they would. Boris Johnson speaks enough shit for one person. I almost lost the will to live when Boris Johnson was speaking. It was that depressing and boring. I love the point where he said it was ambitious, though. Can someone please explain to me how it's ambitious? Let me get rid of his mug as well while we're here. There we go.
too ambitious. Is there anyone in the chat who thinks it's ambitious? Just, just for a bit of balance. Doesn't seem anyone does. No, well, I think it's quite unanimous. <laughs> Cody Sack says, make influenza great again. Yep, we should definitely do that. So is there anything in there that actually changes anything to what we're at now, with the exception of the schools, of course? Anything? I couldn't spot nothing. I've seen people meeting their mates walking down the road every day. So him saying that doesn't really change anything. Yeah, I do think we need to get um, MIGA trending on like Twitter or Facebook or somewhere like that. That is one of them ones. What waffle, you missed the school bit. He just said that all schools will be open the 8th of March. Something they pumped out like three days ago. No, more than that even. Um, it was probably a couple of weeks ago we knew they were going to do that. Yeah, question for you guys. Has any of you lot seen people actually um, adhering to the lockdown? Or have you seen people meeting in the street, walking past, talking Ramon! to their mates? Because I have. Webbs, thank you very much for the super chat donation, mate. Another question is, how many people have you seen dogging? Because that's apparently a thing as well. Not only was Brexit going to cause more dogging, but the lockdown appears to have done it as well. Did he say Jim's open in April? Yes, but all contingent on everything going well until then. If something doesn't, then that will knock it back and then knock everything else back and it could well be next April. So taking it as April is about as likely as it being next April at this point. We'll have to wait and see. Streets are packed in Liverpool. Someone said dog in his love. <laughs> not if you're the old Bill, it's not. A British knight, the only ambition here is believing he is speaking the truth. Honestly, the only things that would change is the fact long distance in a country travel wasn't even mentioned. Yeah, I think he's talking about that will happen when he removes all restrictions. I forget what day exactly he said it was, and I wouldn't even take that as anything either. Every day he's given there, with the exception of maybe this month, or not this month, March, is likely going to be kicked back at least once. But thank you very much for the super chat donation, British Knight. No, dog, dogging does not require a dog. In fact, I would advise you certainly not to be bringing your dog along with you. It won't go well. Ah, welcome back to the channel, Headshot. They'll stop putting warning tape over park benches and Plod will stop telling the elderly to move on when they want to rest. That's the most significant change. Yep, that's correct. Thank you very much for the donation, mate. Tony Sachs, don't worry about thanking me. It's a given. The bloody BBC should be doing it for me. Shouldn't be on me. Shouldn't be on anyone. I've seen two coppers dogging. Wow. Now, apparently, somewhere in London, years back now, there were some coppers that were caught doing a bit of work. They weren't really dogging. They were just a bit of exhibitionists inside a pub. I forget what the pub was called. But a bunch of coppers from a police station nearby got done for, uh, I don't know, passing around one of the other coppers or some bullshit. I can't remember what it was. It was crazy. Absolutely crazy. So, yeah, the old bill get frisky as well. They'll nick people down uh, near Wales. I think it was in Wales the other day. No, Devon. It was on the moors. They'll nick people on the moors for docking while their own staff are at it elsewhere. 
Uh, Moon Swan Silver Light, thank you for the donation. He says, just wait and see. He says things will open gradually, but I wouldn't all be surprised if they found another excuse to keep us in lockdown. Yep, you're right. I wouldn't be surprised either. As a matter of fact, I half expect it. RJ Wells, no problem, mate. Thank you for joining the stream, everyone. I'm just sitting here trying to think to myself what what's actually changed with what he said. What what was the point of all this? They bigged it up for what? Three, four days now? Boris, no, not even more than that, maybe. Boris will be doing this and this, and we're gonna be opening up and nothing's changed. For me, the kids go back to school. That's good. We'll give him that. But he's still gotta roll these bollocks to the fire when it comes to the fact that. He took him out of school in the first place. Questions need to be asked about that. Uh, Jill Thomas, we're not allowed to do anything. Didn't you hear Boris? We're still under legal orders to stay at home and do as you're told and protect the NHS despite it's supposed to protect you. Anything changed? I mean, outdoor sports can restart the end of next month maybe possibly that's that's a change i guess but that's what six weeks away oh yeah kobe let's never forget two weeks to flatten the curve remember that two weeks to flatten the curve or was it three weeks we'll give him it we'll say we'll, we'll say he said three weeks we'll give him that <laughs> What's that? Three weeks in a year, yeah? Ramon! Ramon! Element Custom says this is nothing more than genocide of the elderly and public control. Wonder if Boris read Mein Kampf. I doubt he's read Mein Kampf. He probably has seen bits of it, but I doubt he's actually read it. And genocide of the elderly, I wouldn't go that far, but. They fucked up with the elderly. I think every country has, though, ain't they? How many countries now have sent people into care homes? Does anyone know? I stopped paying attention when they started saying it was multiple thousands. I thought, well, what do you expect? Incompetence is part and parcel of being a politician at this point. Uh, Jill Thomas, I've made videos about writing to MPs and things like that. They ignore it. You should obviously do it. I'll continue to say it to people. You should obviously do it, but they'll ignore it, with the exception of, like, Charles Walker, maybe. A few others will actually say something in Parliament about it, but beyond that... What? What can you do? The BBC won't report it, honestly. Even if you had 10 MPs saying everything, everything you wanted them to say... BBC wouldn't report it. I actually had a video removed from YouTube, by YouTube, no strike or nothing like that. Just a video removed of um, Theresa May talking. I've got the video somewhere. It's on my uh, BitChute channel, but they removed that video. No, no, no reason why, no email, no nothing. They just said, gone, see you later. And that's Theresa May. She's actually on, she's actually talking in Parliament now, funnily enough, talking about her. But yeah, they removed that. I don't know what was wrong with what she said. Uh, lockdowns do work. Yeah, they work if you're trying to kick the can down the road and cause more harm than good, of course. But yeah, they do. They do work, but not for the reasons they want them to work. If anyone can tell me in the chat the reasons why we got the uh, lockdowns. Does anyone know? Because I know exactly why we got the lockdowns. Literally. Yep, first one there, Sean, because China did it. <laughs> That's literally it. <laughs> China, China, China set the precedent for everything over this. Remember the videos of people falling down dead in the street? What happened to that? I've seen none of them anymore. None. And that's what they've done. The West has copied China. They waited to see if Italy would do it. Well, Italy was the first one to do it. And when Italy did it, the whole of Europe could do it. It only takes one 
start the precedent. Once the precedent's there, bang. Job done. The true question is finding out the reason why, proving it, and getting the government or the media to at least admit that there's some basis in evidence for it, which you will never get, of course. Why would they? That's just lunacy. They ain't that well. They're pretty stupid, but they ain't that stupid. Uh, Keith Grant says, let's protest in Cornwall when G7 meets. That is always an option, if providing we are allowed outside. Protests might well still be banned then. They'll find a way of banning that, but allowing you to do absolutely everything else. Ramon! Ramon! But thank you for the donation, mate. Right, guys, I need to end it there. I've got to go. I've got another video to finish making. And then uh, I'll probably do another live stream tomorrow. Maybe later on if I've got a bit of time. I'll do it on the gaming channel. I'll play a game if I have some time. But once again, time is the enemy of us all. Even when Boris is locking us in our homes. So yeah, for anyone who's just joining, Boris's speech, complete waste of time. He called it ambitious. It's about as ambitious as Keir Starmer. <laughs>